Alrighty then, I think I'm finally live. Thanks for being patient while I was uh, figuring out the technology stuff on, uh, on my end of things. Um, if you could please just sound off in the chat, let me know that you can hear me okay, because um, sometimes with this setup, uh, the audio doesn't come through and I don't know that it's not coming through until, uh, until I start up the stream and people can't hear me. So, uh, please sound off in the chat. Let me know that. Uh, let me know that you, you're out there and you hear me. Um, I would appreciate it. Goodness, and uh, thank you all for joining me on your New Year's Eve Eve here. Last live stream of 2022, getting it in just under the wire here. Mordecai says you're good, outstanding. That's what I like to hear. Oh, there's five of you on now. Cool. I was I was I was expecting there not to be uh, any kind of turnout for this tonight because uh, good goodness only knows. Vina V says, "Hey, hey, how's it going?" Um, you know, it's it's the last. Uh, Debbie Ravino hears me. Huzzah! Vina V also hears me. It sounds like that's good. Yeah. Um, last. Uh, it's the last Friday of uh, 2022. So. Figure people would be out having a good time someplace. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you being in and having a good time with me here. Yeah, definitely. Um, cool, cool. I'm going to give it just a couple minutes for people to go ahead and saunter in since I just posted updates about this happening to, um, to all my social media, including Instagram. So thank you all for being on time. I appreciate you. Um, this is going to be a very, very, very different kind of live stream from the ones that uh, I've done before. Um, I, like many people, have been keenly following um, developments with um, AI. And uh, shout out from Singapore, says Vina V. Hey, shout out to you. Good morning. Good morning to you, too. It is uh, 7 o'clock at night where I am, so it is definitely dark out, and uh, it is only because I have all of the lights set up in my, uh, in my apartment that I, I, look so, uh, I look so exposed here, so to speak, you know? Um, but yeah, um, so I know a lot of people have been talking about AI a lot this month. Um, I, I actually think that my live stream maybe coming like a little bit late on the crest of this because people spent a solid week talking about AI on both Facebook and uh, Twitter earlier this month. And I had like this idea for this video that I wanted to do and I was just like, oh, you know, this actually worked really well for a live stream. So I waited to do it uh, until the last Friday of the month because that's, that is when I do my live streams. And now I wonder if, uh, if I'm a little behind the curve on this, but uh, suffice it to say, we are going to <clears throat> either stare into the depths of the future tonight or we're going to find out the shortcomings of uh, deep learning or perhaps both. Uh, we, we, sh we shall see. But uh, I'm going to be going to be grilling uh, chat GPT with questions about poi tonight and um, probably more. Uh, some of that's going to be entertainment for sure, but I'm also going to show you all some of the ways that I am currently using ChatGPT to uh, create like video descriptions and things like that. Spoilers, if you've watched any of my videos from uh, this month, you have almost certainly seen me uh, utilize a tool that uh, AI helped me with. So, fun fact on that one. Um, Stanislas Bernardo says, hey, hey, what up, Stanislas? Uh, weird things happening around here. Where, where are you joining us from, Stanislas? Inquiring minds want to know. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be... Uh, we're going to spend the first half of the evening inside of a chat GPT window um, asking, uh, ask, asking it weird questions. And then um, if you all want to, during the Q&A section, I do still have my full body camera and studio set up here. So um, I, can, I can teach Poi lessons no problem um, when we get to that section of the evening. But I kind of want to have a little fun with this first. So um, yeah, I think uh, 
might not be a terrible time for me to switch us over here. You can see the, uh, the end. You know what I'm gonna do here? I am actually going to move some things around. I am going to do this right here and then I'm going to move myself over so that y'all get a full picture of, uh, of, of the chat as I'm doing it here. Um, but yeah, so this is, this is what we're gonna play around with tonight. Uh, ChatGPT, it is a, uh, it's an app by, uh, by OpenAI. Um, it is uh, something, uh, Piano Blook says, hello, howdy Drex, hello Piano Blook. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, oh, and before we get too far into things, shoot, I, I forgot to do this from the start. Tech Tips is brought to you by Ultra Poi. Uh, if, uh, if we go through me showing off any Poi tricks tonight, it'll be with a set of these Orb Poi LED contact Poi, um, courtesy Ultra Poi, um, or those are the Orb Poi Pros, excuse me. So uh, yeah, if, uh, if uh, I, I would say that, huh, weird, why is, that was really weird, my, um, my bandwidth like got real low there for a second. If any of you all saw the video skipping there, I apologize. Anyway, um, but yes, thanks to UltraPoi for sponsoring my live streams. If you wanna grab a set of their OrbPoi Pros or any other props that they manufacture, um, you can use the code DREXFACTOR with a zero instead of an O at checkout. That gets you a discount on your order and it helps out the channel so everybody wins. Once again, big thanks to UltraPoi for sponsoring uh, our, our live stream here. Yay. Cool. So, ChatGPT. I don't know if anybody out there has used it. So, um, this uses uh, what's called a natural language uh, interface. So, um, basically what I can do is I can ask it a question that, become, that would be commonly understood in English and it will regurgitate an answer that uh, makes it feel very much like you're talking with a human. So for example, I'm, I'm gonna start us off this evening with asking, what is poi spinning? And it's gonna return a result within a few seconds here. And as you can see, the result it's giving us isn't a terrible uh, answer. Um, poi spinning is a form of performance art in which an individual manipulates one or more objects known as poi on the end of tethers. Poi are typically made from lengths of rope, chain, or fabric with weights attached to the ends and are swung in various patterns and rhythms as part of a performance. Poi spinning can be done solo or group activity and is often accompanied by music. It is sometimes referred to as poi dancing or poi flow. This is actually a very, very accurate answer. Uh, poi spinning has roots in Maori culture. Yay, I'm glad they included it. Uh, where it was traditionally performed as part of storytelling and cultural expression. Also true, it has, gained, it has since gained popularity as a form of modern performance art and is practiced by people all over the world. Poi spinning can be a physically demanding activity that requires coordination, endurance, and creativity. It is often associated with the flow arts, yay, which are a group of expressive movement practices that include juggling, staff spinning, and hooping. I like that answer a lot. Now, Here's the thing, like I could try and type up an answer to that very question myself. And this actually is a really, really good answer. Like if somebody were to ask you on Facebook, what is poi spinning? You could come and get to, uh, this two paragraph answer. And you know what? I can actually make a shorter answer. I can ask ChatGPT to shorten this down to one paragraph. Ta-da! And now it's gonna come back and it's going to give me a new result that's only one paragraph long. Poi spinning is a performance art in which an individual manipulates one or more objects called poi on the ends of tethers, swinging them in various patterns and rhythms to music. It has roots in Maori culture and is now practiced worldwide as a form of modern performance art. It requires coordination, endurance, and creativity and is often associated with other expressive movement practices such as juggling and staff spinning. That's, that's, that's not bad. That's a really, really good description. And, you know, 
the funny thing is, is like I that I, I could like sit around probably spending ten minutes brainstorming a paragraph to describe what poise spinning is, and I, this actually did would I I would I would probably say that if I sat down for ten minutes and worked on a paragraph, um, it, it like. It might be a better description of poise spinning, but not that much. Like, it, there is definitely a certain level of this wherein, like, the answers are good enough on a lot of stuff. Now, all that said, I've been playing with this a lot, and, like, good enough um, is a relative term, and it depends upon what you're asking the AI. So, let me, let me give you an example of this. Um, this is something I actually played around with a couple weeks ago when I was originally experimenting with this. Who are the most popular poi spinners in the world? If I was to ask any one of you out there in the chat, who's, who's, uh, whose names would you list in here? Oh, there's more people in the chat. Matt C87, yeah, I made it to one of these live. Yay, I'm glad you did. Drex, can you magically make me spend 1,000% better, please? I cannot, but with practice, you can make you spend 1,000% better for sure. Tom Fontana says, Happy New Year's, Flomies. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Welcome. Welcome. So yeah, I'm going to just, somebody in the chat chime off with like, say, five guesses. If, if, if somebody were to ask you who the most popular poise spinners are in the world, what would your answer be? And uh, my name does not have to be in there. This is, this is not about my ego. I just, what I'm doing here is I want to compare the answers that ChatGPT comes up with versus the answers that you all give. Uh, Tom Fontana says, Drex, Liz. Cool, give me three more, give me three more. I want your top five here, I want your top. And like, honestly, it doesn't have to be the top five poise spinners in the world or anything like that. It can just be five people that you like. It doesn't even matter. It can be Timmy Tech. Great, great example. Yeah. And I'll be really curious to see if it gives me the same answers that it did when I first asked this question. <clears throat> Bo, great. Kurt Hobbs, define poi anti-brids. Yes, we're doing that next. Well, maybe not next, next, but we're doing it next. Um, cool, so uh, I'll tell you what, we've got four answers here. Let's see what ChatGPT says, shall we? Oops, sorry, I'm gonna need to reload the window. This happens every so often. Uh, it is one of the shortcomings of this. Cool. So let's see what it has to say here. Um, I like how it is uh, how how it is kind of um, um, kind of hedging its bets in in how it is answering this question. So. What it's saying is poise spinning is a performance art that involves spinning one or more weighted objects attached to strings or cords. It originated in Maori culture of New Zealand, but has since spread to other parts of the world and become a popular form of entertainment. Now you'll note, this does not actually directly answer our question. Um, part of what it's doing is it's padding its answer a little bit. There are many talented poise spinners around the world and it can be difficult to determine who the most popular ones are as popularity can vary depending on the location and audience. I, I like the hedge here. Some poise spinners who have gained a significant following and reputation in the poise spinning community include Tyler Spencer, also known as Flow Lights, uh, Sasha Nicotina, also known as Sasha, Paul Darnell, also known as Cy Paul, Chris Globe Turner, and Nick Woolsey, also known as Nicodemus. These poise spinners are known for their technical skill, creativity, and performance ability. They have gained recognition through their performances at events and festivals, as well as through their online presence and social media following. There are many other talented poise spinners around the world, and the popularity of individual performers can vary widely. Um, the hedge here is awesome, but now, um, it's giving me slightly different answers than when I first asked this question a couple weeks ago. I think that it has been, uh, it, it's gone through a little bit of retraining here. Um, so of these five, 
The only one of these people that I've ever heard of is Nick Woolsey. Um, now, I'm going to see if I can... Uh, oh, uh, the poem mechanic forgot his name. That's Beacon. No, Drex? This thing's clearly broken. Hey. <laughs> no, I, so... Tell you what, let, let, let's let's maybe feed it an answer that it, a question that's more likely to uh, to give it my name as an answer. So, for example, I could ask, "What is TechPoi?" Darn it! All right, what is TechPoi? If you don't uh, check in, I'm sorry, but I don't know what you were referring to with the term TechPoi. Wow. It gave me an answer to this the last time I asked it. See, the, the AI is like changing by the day. Um, shoot. Let me try it this way. What is tech poi spinning? There we go. So note how once I added the term spinning, it suddenly was off and running. Um, and also, it's, it's giving us the wrong answer here. Strangely enough, I asked this question several weeks ago, and it gave me the right answer, um, or at least a, a workable answer. Um, but let me, sh let me throw this question at it. Who are some of the most influential tech poi spinners? So it's going to give me the hedge once again, which the text of this is going to be remarkably similar to the one that we got for, uh, uh, f oh wow. Yeah, this answer has completely changed since the last time I asked it. Um, so Emily Brindley, don't know who that is. Chris Kelly, we all know. Blue, um, don't know who that is. And Dax Tran Caffey, also don't know who that is. So. In like the two weeks since I first started grilling the AI, um, so just straight up, the first time I asked these questions, the results were people I hadn't heard of. The results have completely changed now, and still most of the answers are people I haven't heard of, but we're, st we're now getting one or two people filtering in there that uh, I do know who they are. So the AI is definitely evolving for sure. Um, so Drex, can you ask what will be the future of Poi Future after poi and juggling. Yeah, absolutely. Who are the best poi spinners named Drex, right? <laughs> yeah, let me, let, me, let me ask. What is the future of poi spinning? Actually, there's one thing I want to do here first, which is um, um, so I'm going to ask it who are some of the most influential hula hoopers. Um, which, it, this is now boilerplate. It, you'll note that the text it's giving me uh, describing hula hooping um, is basically uh, uh, is basically the same block of text that it shot me for who are the most influential uh, uh, tech poi spinners, but plugging more an uh, different answers in. So, um, last time I did this, it actually gave me some of the same answers between tech poi spinners and hula hoopers. And bear in mind, the people it repeated uh, were absolutely not people that I, that I had ever heard of. So um, again, I don't know the hula hooping world that well, but I, I don't, I'm not familiar with any of these people. Um, so here's the thing, it, it, it sometimes spits out if, if, if we're talking about a, two related topics, it will sometimes spit out the same names or the same nicknames for them. At one point, um, I got it to spit out the name of a poi spinner as well as Rachel Lust, who is an influential hula hooper. Um, and it gave me the same nickname for both of them. Um, so it's still learning, but it is also a very blunt instrument for sure. Um, Ask which is the best poi teacher on on YouTube. Yeah, there you go. These are still really fast and interesting responses. Yes, um, one of the things I'm most shocked by is how quickly it writes out these answers for sure. 
But I am going to ask it about the future of Poi, because why not? What is the future of Poi spinning? It is difficult to predict the future of Poi spinning with certainty. I love how it hedges every single answer. Um, so, it is difficult to predict the future of poi spinning with certainty as the popularity and evolution of the art form depend on a variety of factors. However, it is likely that poi spinning will continue to evolve and change over time, incorporating new technology style, techni techniques, styles, and technologies. So, I want to point something out about this paragraph. Um, I sailed through my English classes in elementary school and from and, and, and high school because I was really good at writing paragraphs like this, where I could basically avoid having to say anything by just throwing long sentences and like language that hedged my bets at things. And then in college, I had a composition professor who, after I turned in my first assignment, he literally sat me down and he's just like, you've coasted through every English class you've ever had because you know big words, and you know how to overwrite a sentence. In my class, you're actually going to have to write an argument. And taking that class made me so much better a writer, and the guy, actually, the guy had me totally dead to rights. The way this program writes paragraphs is exactly how I wrote paragraphs before I took that class, where it was about filling up space with words that didn't actually commit to anything, and figuring out how to embellish language to make it feel like things were being said without actually saying anything at all. Um, this tool is exceptionally good at that. Um, it, is, it is exceptionally good at padding text. Um, so let me get into the second paragraph here. One trend that has emerged in recent years is the incorporation of technology into poi spinning with the development of LED poi and other technology enhanced performances. This trend will likely continue as technology continues to advance and new tools become available to performers. It is also possible that virtual and augmented reality technology could be used in poi spinning performances in the future. So that last sentence is literally the one and only thing in that paragraph that I think actually lands anywhere close to either answering that question and or um, giving us any kind of real insight. Uh, another trend that may continue is the growing popularity of poi spinning as a form of exercise and movement therapy. Poi spinning has been found to have a number of physical and mental health benefits, and it is possible that more people will discover these benefits and incorporate poi spinning into their fitness routines. Yeah, definitely. Overall, the future of poi spinning is likely to be shaped by the creativity and innovation of individual performers as well as the demands and interests of the audience. Again, hedging their bets and throwing a around a lot of words that don't actually add up to anything. Um, boom, boom. Are flow arts still gaining popularity or have they reached their peak? Well, I, let me ask the AI this. I have my own, my own opinion on this one, but um, let me ask the AI. Um, ba -ba -bum. Laser boy, there you go. Are flow arts gaining in popularity or have they peaked? It may throw me an error on this one because of the way the language is phrased, but we'll see. Cool. Flow arts, which include various performance arts such as poi spinning, hula hooping, juggling, and others have gained in popularity in recent years and become more widely known and accepted as a form of entertainment and artistic expression. Again, so many words and nothing is actually being said there. However, it is difficult to determine whether flow arts have peaked in popularity or will continue to grow in the future. The popularity of flow arts can vary widely depending upon geographic location and cultural context. In some areas, flow arts may be more established and have a larger, more dedicated following, while, while as in others, they may be less well known or have a smaller following. Overall, it seems that the flow arts have gained a measure of mainstream recognition and acceptance, and it is possible that they will continue to grow in popularity. However, the future of flow arts will depend on a variety of factors, including the create. This sentence, it literally lifted this sentence out of that last answer, including the creativity and innovation of individual performers, the demand for flow arts in various communities, and the availability of resources and opportunities for flow arts practitioners. So again, there's like literally no substance in here whatsoever. But 
if somebody were to ask you this question, this would, you know, you, you can actually just throw this together as boilerplate for sure. Uh, William Seward, hi, just wanted to say you have been a lifesaver when it comes to poi and my sanity. Oh, I have severe ADHD and I've been loving poi lately when I have to get up and move around. Outstanding. Poi is very good for that. I am so glad that you were able to find it and I, uh, and, and that my videos were able to help you get there for sure. Laser, poi, RGB that emit fog. <laughs> I love it. If you keep teaching it repeatedly, you could probably get it to list transitions and choreograph for you. People get it to write music at the moment. Sure. Um, I think it's hedging because these last few questions are all very subjective. It's true. It's true. Um, so let me, let, 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 let me give you an example of, um, well, so let's see if we can come up with an example that demands a more, um, ask the AI if anybody's created a later point. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe in a minute here. Um, so let's ask it a question that has a more definite answer. So th this was very famously done recently on Poi Chat. Um, teach me how to do a Poi butterfly. Let's see what it says to this. A poi butterfly is a basic poi spinning technique that involves swinging the poi in a figure eight pattern around the body. It is a good technique for beginners to practice and is often used as a foundation for more advanced poi spinning moves. Here are the steps for how to perform a poi butterfly. Begin standing with your feet shoulder width apart and your arms extended to the sides. Hold the poi by the handles with your palms facing down. Swing the poi in a small circle in front of your body. Start with one poi and then try adding the second poi once you feel comfortable with the motion. As you swing the poi in a small circle, move your hands up and down in a figure eight pattern. Nope. This will cause the poi to swing in a figure eight pattern around your body. Practice the figure eight pattern with both poi. Start slowly and gradually increase your speed as you become more comfortable with the motion. To add more complexity to the butterfly, try crossing the poi in front of your body as you swing them. This will create a more intricate... When were we swinging them behind our body? This will create a more intricate pattern and add a new level of difficulty to the move. Thank you, my job is safe. Um, Ha, uh, poise, my go-to ADHD, procrastination too. How to write poise spinning in language. I have ADHD too. See you in convention, guys. Yes, amazing. Um, yeah, so this is one of the big drawbacks right now with it is that um, it presents answers that are wrong in language that makes it sound like it is certain about the answers. Um, and there are some things that it is sitting on that it has totally right and some things that it's sitting on that it has totally wrong. So uh, we're, we're now a half an hour in, so I wanna switch gears just a little bit. I recommend y'all sign up uh, over at OpenAI to, uh, to use this tool and see what you can get to get it to regurgitate because there's a lot of interesting things that it can do. And you know sometimes you have these moments where you ask it a question and it delivers a surprisingly lucid and together answer. But um, there are very specific things that I'm using this for right now. And I want you to, and I want to show you all what those uses are because they might be useful for you all too. So here's what I'm going to do. Hmm. No horizontal or vertical indication. Yes, indeed. Um, Again, this, this definitely has its limits. So let me, let me, let me show you uh, something that I've been using this for a lot lately. So I'm gonna start a new chat and I'm gonna ask it to write me a title for a video on musicality in poi spinning. Some of y'all doubtlessly know that I released that video just a couple weeks ago. Uh, exploring the art of musicality and poise spinning. Let me uh, give me five suggestions for a title of a video on musicality in poise spinning. The Room of Poi, How Music Influences Spinning, Dancing with Poi, The Connection Between Music and Movement, Finding Your Flow, The, ro the Role of Musicality in Poi Spinning, Musical Poi, The Art of Syncing Movement with Sound, Poi and Music, A Match Made of Movement Heaven. These are all really good, honestly. Like, 
Um, the, I, I, I used this tool to plan out the title for that video, and I, I think that I took word for word uh, one of the titles that it suggested to me because I just thought it was really good. Um, to give you another example, uh, how about this? Write me a summary for a video on musicality in poi dancing. Check it out. In this video, we will delve into the world of musicality and poi spinning. Poi is a form of dance that involves spinning weighted objects on strings or chords, and it is often accompanied by music. The relationship between the two is integral to the art form as the music helps guide the movements and flow of the dancer. We will explore how dancers use music to find their rhythm and flow and how they sync their movements with the beat and melody of the music. We will also discuss the role of musicality in creating a visually stunning and dynamic performance. Whether you are a seasoned poi dancer or just starting out, this video will provide insights and, in, and inspiration for incorporating musicality into your practice. So I'm not going to lie to y'all. This is probably a better description than I would have come up with on my own. Um, generally speaking, once I f like, so writing a description for my videos usually comes quite near the end of the process after I've edited the video and created the thumbnail. And it's something that I don't really enjoy doing that much. So like, this is not only a better description that I would have done on my own, but also, you know, this took me less time. Um, I think that there's a really great tool here for creating stuff that like, and, and here's the thing, when you talk about a video description, you're talking about something that like maybe 5% of people that are jumping onto your channel are gonna actually read. But those that do, this is a pretty good summary of what they're gonna get in that video. That allows me to spend more time creating the video itself rather than agonizing over what the video description is going to be. Um, hang on, let me see if anybody's saying here. What is a good first poi move to learn yielded some accurate moves? Cool, but in correction descriptions of the movement. Yeah, I believe that. Uh, I'm happy I'm not the only one that has used poi for ADHD. Much love from Ireland. Hey, much love from Washington, DC. And no, you are far from the only person that has used poi for ADHD. Somebody was actually telling me about that on my Facebook the other day. Um, but anyway, um, let, let me, so those of you all who might be interested in creating your own poi related content, this would be a great tool to help you out. Let me show you how. Um, so let's, let's, let's start off basic. Um, what is a good strategy for starting a YouTube channel about poi spinning. Again, the first, uh, the first paragraph is boilerplate. Now here's where it gets interesting. Choose your target audience. Who do you want to reach with your videos? Are you aiming for beginners, intermediate spinners, or advanced practitioners? Understanding your target audience will help you tailor your content and style to better meet their needs and interests. Choose a niche. While poi spinning is a broad topic, you may want to focus on a specific aspect of the art form, such as musicality, flow, or technical skills. This can help you stand out and attract viewers who are interested in that particular aspect of poi. Plan your content. Think about the types of videos you want to create and how often you want to post. You might consider creating tutorials, performance videos, or vlogs about your experiences as a poi spinner. Invest in equipment. While you don't need expensive equipment to start a YouTube channel, having good lighting and a decent camera can help improve the quality of the, vid of the videos. Promote your channel. Once you have some videos up, it's important to let people know about your channel. Share your videos on social media, reach out to other poi spinners or dance communities, and consider collaborating with other creators to help your audience. There are zero lies in this. Quite frankly, um, I have paid people to give me this kind of advice. This is all fantastic advice for starting a channel. Now, let's say, um, give me 10 suggestions for videos I, uh, for video topics around poi spinning. 
How to get started with poise spinning, poise spinning for beginners, five essential moves, musicality in poise spinning, tips and tricks, creating flow with poise, techniques for seamless transitions, exploring different styles of poise spinning, poise spinning for fitness, a full body workout, advanced poise tricks, take your poise spinning to the next level, the history of poise spinning and its cultural significance, poise spinning for performance, tips for creating a show stopping routine, poise spinning for stress relief, the benefits and flow, uh, the benefits of flow and movement. All these are great ideas. If you're having a hard time thinking of what you might want to create content around, this is actually a really good way to get started. Like, and, and here's the thing is like, you might find that some of these topics don't really suit you, but they might give you ideas for other things. Or you can ask, give me 10 more suggestions. Boom. Poise spinning in meditation, finding inner peace through movement. Poise spinning in creativity, unleashing your inner artist. Poise spinning in mindfulness, the power of presence in movement. Poise spinning in healing, using movement as therapy. Poise spinning in self-expression, find your unique voice through dance. Poise spinning in community, the power of shared experience. Poise spinning in connection, building relationships through movement. Again, all of these are not bad suggestions. Or let's say that you don't want to create content. Let's say you want to, you want to uh, create a spin jam. How can I create a flow flow arts spin jam in my area? Let's see if it knows what a spin jam is. Yeah, define your goals. What do you want to achieve with your spin jam? Do you want to create a community gathering place, provide a space for skill sharing and learning, or simply have a fun and relaxed place to spin together? Knowing your goals will help you Plan and structure your spin jam. That's not wrong. Find a, find a venue, gather support, set a date and time, promote your spin jam. Plan logistics. Have fun. Nice. Hey, how do I promote a spin jam? There are several ways you can promote your spin jam. Use social media. Create a Facebook event or group. No lies detected. Create a flyer or a poster. Distribute it around your community or post it online to social media or local flow arts groups. Reach out to local flow arts groups and communities. Partner with sponsors or organizations. Utilize word of mouth. Encourage your friends and fellow flow artists to spread the word. Consid consider offering incentives. You might uh, offer prizes, free snacks or drinks. This is all good advice. Like, here's the thing. Um, I think sometimes, so there are definitely parts of my job that I struggle with. I'm really bad at like brainstorming titles and writing descriptions and even um, deciding on keywords to target with my videos. This is a great tool that automates all of that. I think that there's a lot of potential here if you know how to use it. Like, and here's the thing is, Whenever you get invested in a project, there are going to be parts of that that are really interesting to you that you want to put your mark that you really really want to put your own mark on, and there's stuff some stuff that's not fun. There's some stuff that like you either want somebody else to do or that you know if you have the opportunity to automate it, then why not? Um, and I think that this is a great tool for automating some of those tasks that are not fun. Um, there's a lot of good information in it. There's some stuff that's wrong. Um, and, you know, I would say, think of this tool as being a place to start rather than a place to end. You know, if it gives you results that, uh, if it gives you results to a question that you're, you're wrestling with, try and see if you can confirm those results with somebody else. Um, or just try doing what it recommends and seeing where that takes you. Um, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of potential here. Um, the the long term on this is not clear because um, as of right now, I don't think that there's a income model in place for this. So it's just it's just burning money. But I could easily see a tool similar to this becoming something that eventually like replaces Google. Like um, I've heard reports that uh, Google is going to have its own uh, natural language tool that's going to become available very soon. I'm curious to see if it'll give chat GPT a run for its money. But like, as a content creator, this is actually a really, really, really helpful tool. Um, 
and it does things that I don't like to. So if there's a project that you want to work on, maybe you want to start a spin gym, maybe you want to start a fire festival, um, maybe you just want advice on how you can get better at a particular aspect of poise spinning, maybe improve on your dance, do harder tricks, what have you. Uh, you know, I don't think that this is a bad tool for, for, uh, for getting engaged in that. Um, so, oh, hi, just wondering where I could find good online poi community. So far, YouTube and Reddit have been my go-to. Uh, Facebook, actually, <laughs> hey, why don't we ask Chad GPT? Where can I find good online poi communities? Facebook, there are very many Facebook groups dedicated to poi spinning and flow arts. Yes, it's true. The biggest one is uh, poi chat. Instagram is a great platform for finding poi communities. It is visual and easy. You can search for hashtags related to poi spinning or flow arts to find accounts and communities to follow. Reddit, you're already on that. Online forums, um, the home of poi forum is kind of dead at this point, and I don't think that Flow Toys actually does have one. Um, so yeah, the, the, the answers to this one aren't all that great, but um, yeah, this is not a bad place to start. Uh, going to Poi Chat would probably be a good place to start. You can post a message there asking if there is a specific um, uh, Facebook group that is uh, specific to your area. That might be a, a good place to start, but yeah. Um, I, I personally think there's a lot of potential in this tool. Um, and clearly, it also has its limitations. Um, I think it's very good at automating tasks that like are kind of, uh, that I find to be mind numbing, personally. Uh, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Um, it also has its limitations. It's clearly not going to be taking over my job anytime soon. Um, but I do see some ways that it can make my job easier. So I wanted to uh, I wanted to show you all both extremes of this tonight because um, I personally think that we're probably going to see more, more AI tools uh, coming around in the next few years. And I think it's good to both look at them with a certain degree of skepticism as well as um, looking at the ways in which they can be used as tools to support our own work. Because that's ultimately what these are meant to be. Um, they're meant to be tools that can automate away tasks that are annoying or tasks that you, know, you might not enjoy doing. So there you go. Um, that is asking AI questions about POI. And of course, there's so many other questions that we could be asking. Um, that we could be asking right now, but uh, we we're already 45 minutes into uh, in, into the live stream tonight, so I wanted to uh, transition us over into doing Q and A. Again, thank you, Ultra Poi, for uh, sponsoring sponsoring me getting on uh, on YouTube uh, live streams and asking AI questions about Poi. Um, appreciate y'all, and I hope you all have found this to be interesting too. Um, and if you are looking for more examples of how these tools can be used, uh, hop on Twitter. Um, there are so many threads out there now of uh, people who've you know, found some really, really great techniques for getting really specific results out of things like uh, ChatGPT. So go and check that out. Um, Coolio, let's, let's, go ahead, let's go ahead and switch things over so that we can do some real Q&A. Um, yeah, so as of now, you're asking me questions and not, the, uh, and not the AI, so you can be guaranteed that the answer is going to be right. Just kidding. Uh, there are things I don't know the answers to, of course. But um, yeah, I can show you tricks. I can answer questions about the flow arts community. I can answer questions about my career. I can answer questions totally unrelated to flow arts as well. It's up to you. Um, I did go kind of long on this first section of the live stream, which is weird. I, that normally doesn't happen. So I will probably go over the hour just a little bit here. Oh, and also, um, I will answer the questions in the order that they come in. If you want to get your question bumped to the top of the queue, you can use uh, a super chat. That is that 
little uh, square block, that button that looks, that's got like a dollar sign in the middle of it. Um, that money is basically like a virtual tip jar for the channel. So all that money comes straight to me. And if you do send me a super chat, uh, I will bump your question up to the top of the queue and answer it next. So let's see what we got here. Tom Fontana says VR flow arts. Drex, come out with your instructions on VR. I know nothing about VR. Um, who you should follow for that is, um, so the guy who created, um, which me jig it, uh, Nine Square Theory, his name is Charlie Cushing. He has a company called Prop Logic, and they are working on a VR poi game right now. And if memory serves, they're pretty, cl like, oh, I want to say... They have stuff that you can download on Steam now. Don't quote me on this, I could be wrong. Um, first person flow would be great, right? No, I, I, I've done, I've actually done some videos. I, I've done plenty of video tutorials where I'm recording with like a GoPro strapped to my forehead. So I, I have a bunch of first person perspective videos of poise spinning. It has its limitations as a teaching tool though, um, because there, like a lot of the stuff that I do like flowers, just involves like having my arms spread out so far that uh, that using the GoPro is not that helpful. Uh, have you thought about VR? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, when Charlie is ready to launch, he and I are talking about me doing a teaching app uh, that will uh, that that will work inside of uh, of Prop Logic. Um, he's what he's got in the um, what, what he's got in the works right now is there's a game uh, that you'll be able to play, um, as well as like he wants uh, people to be able to learn how to spin poi through the app as well. So the learning side of things, um, I will probably be helping out on, um, but there will also be a game, and I'm sure uh, a, a few other uses for it too. Um, so keep an eye out. Yeah. Um, I have thought about VR. So, so I think VR is really, really interesting because, um, all right, I'm, I might give an overly long answer to this. You're going to have to, uh, you're, you're going to have to pardon me here. So VR is an interesting, uh, industry for flow arts and poise spinning for a few reasons. Number one, um, you know, clearly it's kind of an ideal uh, market for for flow arts because, um, you know, people do it indoors. In a lot of cases, they're engaging in activities that are getting them to get up and move around even though they're playing video games, um, which is something that, like, flow arts have been ideal for, I, I, ideal for, for a long time. Um, also, <laughs> unlike most flow artists, people who do VR probably have money. Um, it is a cliche at this point that most flow artists are kind of broke and um, there's not a lot of capital in the community. And if you can invest in a VR set, um, you definitely have, uh, you've, 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 got, you've got a chunk of change there. So that brings more money into the community, which makes it like, which, which will support the community and it'll support people like doing stuff in the community full time, which I think is good. Here are the limitations and the problems. And the biggest thing of all is just like, adoption is gonna be really hard because VR is still very, very niche. Um, to do it, you need to wear a headset that weighs a few pounds. It's not pleasant to do for long periods of time. Um, I actually, this is like gonna be a weird little humble brag, but stick with me here. Um, I have a really rough time in VR because I have really, really good eyesight. Um, I have 2015 vision in my left eye. And so whenever I put on a VR headset, everything is kind of blurry for me. There is absolute, like just the resolution of VR headsets are such that I can never get them to focus um, as sharp as my eyes can focus. So. I actually get headaches being in VR for too long because my eyes keep trying to focus on a thing that will never come completely into focus for them. So I think there is some limitations with the technology. 
Um, Flow Arts, although, is, is a really, really great application for it because um, one of the biggest problems in VR is what's known as haptics. That is um, things that give you physical feedback about the actions that you're taking in VR. So the classic example of this is like if I were to like pound my hand down on a table in VR, I'm exerting several pounds worth of force with my hand. Um, if I were to have something give me tactile feedback of like pounding my hand down on that table in VR, it would have to exert force equal to the force that my hand is coming down with. That is enough force to break a human bone. Um, so haptics are rough. But the thing is, is that if you do flow arts in VR, the haptics are built in. Like if you're spinning poi, Gravity's already giving somebody all of the feedback that they need um, to know what's going on with the props that they're spinning. So flow arts are a great way of getting around haptic feedback. Um, yeah, so I think that I, I I think that we are still at least at least a generation away from a version of VR that has any chance of being widely adopted. The 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 um, the hardware is just too clunky still. You know, I I appreciate that computing power has gotten to the point where you can have a computer in your home that can render VR for you. That like my first uh, experiences with VR were in the 90s. You'd have to go to like a VR arcade to do it, um, and now the computing power is such that you can you, the computing power you can have in your home. The problem is, is that we didn't have improvements on the interactive portion of the hardware that happened as rapidly as the improvements to um, the, the rendering hardware, to the, to the computation. So I don't know what the future holds for that. Um, you know, AR glasses or something that I think might become a thing. Wearables are difficult because it has to be something that doesn't interfere with movement. Like, uh, I, I am very, very, very skeptical of the idea of technology being integrated into the human body at any point because it, like, the risks are enormous from infection. Um, it has to work better than what your body's already doing. Um, like, when we create devices that we interact with, they're usually things that are outside of our bodies, our cell phones glasses, etc. because like having anything that, that like is part of the human body is sketchy. Um, and here's the big thing. They have to do something that the human body does at least as good, if not better. Like my cell phone exists so that I can communicate with people and so that I can look up information from all over the world. That would be difficult for me to do with stuff that is a part of my body. So like, but I'm carrying around a device that weighs less than a pound and it fits in my pocket. VR has to become at least that convenient before it'll achieve wide adoption. And I do not see that happening for at least another generation of the technology. Straight up. So, yeah, some positives and minuses there. Yeah. Um, Kurt Hobbs, any New Year's resolutions? Yeah, so... Uh, so I have goals for the new year. Um, I want this to be the year that I break 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, I want to become the first poise spender to 100,000 subs, um, which I, I think I'm in a pretty good position to be doing. I only need to add, I think, another 10,000 subs this year. Um, so I will definitely need to like up my content game a little, but I think that it's doable. Um, I am also looking to pivot into live events. Um, I am hoping to have uh, a festival that I, I am the primary organizer for uh, in September to coincide with the 15 year anniversary of, of starting my channel. I, I'm, that process started a couple weeks ago. I'm still working on it. I don't have a venue. When I have a venue, I will announce it. When I have a venue, that's, that's the sign that the thing is actually going to happen. I have been in a position before to try and promote an event without having a venue in place and it blew up in my face terribly. So um, I learned that lesson. When I, when I have the venue locked down and committed, there will be an announcement. Um, I'm also 
considering trying like local events, like uh, local spin jams, like trying to come up with a model for that, that, uh, that, that might be something that I can bring to other communities. Um, on a personal level, um, yeah, uh, th th this might be TMI, but like, I really, I, I, I really want to find, I, I, I want to find a romantic partner. I want to, I, I want to, I want to get settled down before I'm out of my forties and, um, yeah, no time like the present to start on that. So, um, yeah, I'm going to, uh, trying to, trying to find a, a long-term partner is definitely going to be, I mean, it was a priority this last year too, but, um, I think, I think that there are some smarter ways that I can go about it that I want to work on in the coming year. Um, other stuff, I'm working on trying to be able to do the splits. I'm hoping to have that happen in the coming year. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else. I want to read more books. Um, I want to do more regular dance videos. I want to choreograph more often. Um, yeah, I think I think those are some of the big uh, bullet points. I want to I want to go on a vacation just for for fun uh, in the coming year. I did I this past year is the first time that I have taken a vacation for literally no other reason than to just have fun on it in over a decade. And um, yeah, I uh, I want to do that again. That's healthy for you. That's that's a good idea to do. So I want to I want to take a real vacation again next year. So um, yeah, those are some of the priorities. And and also too, I think I want to I, I want to attend at least two uh, flow festivals. I, I have not I, I attended one festival this past year, and it was uh, at a college in New England. And I definitely th this is a part of the flow culture that I I, I took my finger off of the pulse of uh, about two or three years back, even before the pandemic happened. Um, and I think it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for me to uh, gingerly put my finger back on the pulse there and see what's going on in that world. So yeah, that's a random smattering of, uh, of New Year's resolutions from me. Yeah. What are some things you all are looking forward to in the new year? And do you have any additional questions for me? You can keep asking. I think, um, I think I'm going to go until 10 past the hour here just because uh, we took so long asking chat GPT questions. Although I think I might've eaten up a lot of your questions by feeding them to chat GPT as well. So uh, there's, there's, there's definitely a little bit of a blurry line there for sure. Oh, but yeah, keep them coming my way. Keep them coming my way. Hmm. Also, Reading Tom Fontana's posts here, VR Flow Dojo Arcade. Yeah, I'm down for that. The brain sweats. They are kind of crap. I'm assuming you're referring to the, the headsets. Uh, wireless props tech, the future. I mean, well, I got, I got you. So wireless control of props. Yeah, that'd be helpful to have on more sets of poi. Although, like, here's the thing. It's, it's got to be a good user interface, and it's got to, like, it's got to be a net gain because, like, I, there was a launch of a wireless app to control props this past year that I don't think was very good. And um, I've seen apps for props that are good and like, you know, make it so that you wanna use the prop more and offer features that you couldn't get um, just with the props alone. Um, and I think that we need to see more apps like that out there. I think that'd be good. Uh, um, ba -ba -ba. We are tethered to these phones. We certainly are. Uh, have you seen Avatar 2? And if so, any thoughts? I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. Um, who knows? Maybe maybe that'll be what I do for part of my New Year's weekend is, is go check out some Avatar action. Why not? Um, I have a friend who saw it and uh, her... What she said is that it is a really incredible spectacle, but the story is incredibly clunky. Um, so at this point, that is that is my um, uh, that that is uh, what you want to call it. The um, that's the point I'm starting from in in thinking about what comes next. What what uh, what, what I'll see in Avatar too. Um, Tom Fontana says, "You got this. Keep up the great work and energy. Do you?" 
Do good, think good, be good. Okay, cool, will do. Um, what do you think will be the newest innovation in the POI world? And what is an innovation you would like to see most in POI? Um, God's honest truth. The biggest innovation I want to see in POI is better live events. I think that, uh, that's probably not the answer you were looking for, but that is the answer that I have. Um, the business model for flow festivals now, it was a business model that was created back in like 2004. We're, we're like, we're nearly two decades past when the original business model for flow festivals was created. And it is my opinion that, um, the fact that that model hasn't been innovated on at all in two decades is a problem. We've seen not just attendance shrink at events, but also the number of events decline too. And it's one of these things that the way the festivals keep responding to it is by offering worse and worse experiences. They, they keep cutting things rather than trying to offer something new and interesting to get people uh, interested again. This is one of the reasons why I want to create my own event. Um, I think that we need a complete overhaul of, uh, of the flow festival uh, model. And I think we need different kinds of festivals. I think that there are different points of interest that people have, and we need to come up with different events that cater to them. We need flow festivals that are like spiritual retreats. We need flow festivals that have like poi competitions. We need flow festivals that like exist basically solely to introduce new people to flow arts. Um, I think that there's a lot of potential out there. I think the whole like flow festival as like, you know, kind of budget brand music festival thing has been done to death at this point. There's already events that, that do that and I think do it about as well as anybody's going to because there's a, a central problem there that like the whole theory of like doing a music festival is you're trying to pack thousands of people into as small an area as possible. Doesn't work with flow arts because we take up so much room. So you either have to charge more ahead or you have to come up with a different approach for doing it. Um, so, or like, you know, there are some festivals that have come about it in this way where it's basically like the flow artists are kind of this quasi paid entertainment that uh, acts as an incentive for non-flow people to show up. And there's been mixed results with that. Um, I think there's a lot of room for innovation in flow festivals. And I think it's really important that we see innovation in flow festivals because in a lot of respects, like part of what brings people into this world and keeps them in this world is the community attached to it. Flow festivals are the center of the flow community. And if those festivals are not doing a good job of making people feel welcome and giving them reasons to come back, they're gonna fall, they're, they're gonna fall out of flow arts entirely. So I think the biggest innovation we need is, is better flow festivals for sure. As for what I think the newest innovation in the flow world is, um, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm 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 gonna go with an easy answer here. Um, Juggling Calling is sending me a pair of um, of uh, Zip Poi, the ones that uh, Bow Juggler's been using recently, where the head is mobile and can slide back and forth on the tether. Um, I think. Uh, it would not shock me to see that becoming uh, a bigger deal next year. Um, I think the big problem there is going to be distribution since they're coming from overseas and people, people don't like to wait to get orders. So um, one of two things could happen, either juggling, calling, find somebody to uh, essentially function as a U.S. distributor or if they get popular enough, you see a company here in the US that manufactures flow props that makes their own version of it. That I could foresee becoming a big thing. Um, yeah, because, you know, Contact Poi has not significantly been innovated in like close to a decade. You know, like I think the last big innovation was honestly um, the creation of. Uh, Lantern Smith's Umoja Poi. Um, and they didn't really catch on because they didn't have a good marketing plan for it. I think that a, like, 
there's definitely interest in the zip poi. Um, and I think if you get a bunch of influential flow artists in the United States creating content around them, it'll make them catch on and that'll become a big thing. There's clearly there's a couple steps in between here and there, but like I think zip poi are positioned in a good way where um, there's some prominent flow artists that are already using them. Um, they represent something that is different but familiar enough that um, the kind of leap to getting there is, is not terribly big. Um, if they can overcome the marketing and distribution challenges, yeah, I, I think that that could, uh, that could become a big deal. Cool. Um, Tom Fontana, poi attached to staff, my friend made. Spinning it is very fun and different. Yeah, that sounds very fun and different. Um, seen performers use electricity it was crazy. Yeah, I, I remember uh, seeing some performers doing the same at Burning Man several years ago. Tesla coils are wild, I tell you what. Uh, cool, we're coming up at uh, 10 past the hour. So if anybody has any, any last questions they want to throw in under the wire here, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, otherwise, I think that we are going to start to wind down. I'm going to say thanks once again to UltraPoi for sponsoring the live stream here. Uh, if you, I didn't even use these at all tonight. <laughs> if you would like to grab a set of these Orb Poi Pros, um, I, they're, they're lovely, even though I, was, I didn't use them at all tonight. Uh, use the code DREXFACTOR with zero instead of an O at checkout over at ultrapoi.com. That gets you a discount on your order and it supports the channel so everybody wins there. Thank you once again to Ultrapoi for giving me a reason to do this here live stream. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think what I will say is um, I appreciate those of you. Oh, shoot. Hi, Kurt. Oh, thank you for the super chat. Shoot, okay, we're gonna keep going then. Uh, do you think there will ever be a point where all possible options for poi moves and combos will be explored and there will be nothing, nothing left to create? No, I don't. Um, I think that poi is an open enough system that there's always good, like, <sighs> let, actually, let me back up a second and couch that. Because like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm uh, also, thank you again for the super chat. Um, I'm going to give you a chat GPT answer to this one. <laughs> no, cause, um, so like, here's the thing. Think about when we made the transition from classic poi to contact poi it opened up new roads for us because the form factor created opportunities to do tricks that we couldn't do with poi before. I think we will continue to see innovations around form factor, and I think that they will open up new doors. I also know for a fact that we still have not uncovered every stone, even with like all the stuff we explored during the heyday of, of the tech poi movement back in the early 2010s. Spoilers, I've got a video coming out next month where I discovered something new with something that like predated me, you know? Like uh, the past couple years, I dug into 1.5s and discovered they were just another form of caps. And once that, ter that stone was uncovered, there was a whole bunch of stuff that came out of that. Um, I think there's still plenty of stuff left to discover. Um, I think, though, that over time, what happens inevitably in an art form is that regardless of whether there's new stuff being introduced, there comes to be a codified language of common movement that um, just becomes the, the lingua franca, right? So there are new innovations happening in dance. For example, like there's a bunch of stuff with tricking and locking that um, has been created in the past 10 years. But the vocabulary around ballet is largely unchanged now for what, two or 300 years at this point? And people still do it. People still write new ballets. And sometimes they incorporate elements from newer dance styles. And sometimes they just find new phrases. They find new ways of writing things to say in the classic rules of ballet. 
So I think what's going to happen over time, like flow arts and poise spinning, like contemporary poise spinning are so young for all intents and purposes, like that has been a formal art for no longer than a maybe a decade and a half, probably closer to a decade. I know that like I'm in the process of trying to create a body of work around formalizing uh, in a, a series of you know, artistic gestures, if you will, around poi, um, and specifically poi dancing. And other people are gonna have their own approaches. Um, I think that, I think that there's more tricks to find. I think that there's more combos to find. And I think that there's gonna be ways that people find to say new things with old pieces. Um, you know, on a certain level, I, I think with any art form, there like the the there's no bottom to the well. I mean, for love of Pete, like if people still paint. How many thousands of years have there been with people applying different pigments to a flat surface and representing a bunch of new things? We haven't run out of things for people to paint. Um, people still come up with new things to paint, and it's just like. You know, the possibilities are endless. When it comes right down to it, like there has to be like some algorithm that can figure out every single combination of every single possible color put in every single pixel of an image. And I still guarantee you somebody will find something new because just like having colors on a canvas doesn't say anything. It, 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 it's just like, it's just throwing spaghetti at the wall. But somebody is going to come up with some new way of saying something. And I think the same will be true of poi. I think that there will always be techniques for saying new things with it. Um, and... That's not to say that parts of it won't like look like things that have come before. After all, we're all standing on the shoulders of giants, right? Um, but yeah, I think I think what we will see is more schools of poi spinning becoming codified in that way, and like having a vocabulary of moves that are associated with them. And I think new schools will be invented. I think new form factors will be invented and new poi moves and new combos will become possible with those new form factors. I think we will um, import different ideas from other props. Um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I, I, don't, I don't think that the number of poi tricks out there is infinite by any means. But I all, it, it, it's also a number that is big enough that I don't think we'll ever get to the bottom of it. Yeah, that's my thought on that. That was a really, really long answer to that question. And that, I, I appreciate you giving me a super deep question to close out the evening on. And also, thank you once again for the super chat, Kurt. That, that, that's awesome. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you showing up for these so regularly. Like, you're definitely one of the regulars, and I love having you on here. You ask really good questions. Cool, friends. Well, um, with that, I'm going to call it a night. Have a happy new year. Pretty please be safe. Make sure that you get to experience 2023. If um, you are out making merry with your friends, um, you know, and you have any doubts, call that Uber up. Again, it's better, it's better to... It's better to uh, make it home safe and get to experience 2023 than to chance it. So um, please be responsible out there. Um, yeah, and thank all of you out there who've been watching and supporting me through 2022. It has meant a lot to me. This was definitely a big year of growth for me, both as a content creator and as a person. So thank you one and all. Brian Acosta says, thanks, Drex. Oh, thank you too. Um, yeah. I mean, if not for you all, it's just me talking to a camera. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for supporting my channel. Thank you all for everything. I really appreciate y'all. All right. And with that, I'm going to bid you all adieu. 
Have yourselves a great evening and a very happy new year. I'll see you uh, I'll see you in 2023.